Welcome to Literary and Jury Charge Practice. Let's get started with this jury charge. Ready? The case that was before the court was that of murder. The question that arose was that of time. The murder that was committed was supposed to be some time in the p.m. According to the police, the murder was committed at approximately 10 p.m. The time of the murder was established by the police. The police knew that the crime had been committed before midnight. They were to produce evidence of that fact. They established the crime as having occurred at approximately 10 p.m. They had testimony from a police officer that indicated the time of the murder. The question is, what happened in the intervening hours. The actual crime was reported about midnight. The body was discovered shortly before midnight and reported to a police officer. That police officer called in the murder. The person who reported the crime to the police officer confessed to the killing. He indicated that he killed the individual in the heat of passion. He indicated that in the intervening hours he was deciding what to do about the killing. According to police reports, the murder was committed at approximately 10 p.m. All right, let's try this, this literary material, and it's called Good Old Summertime. A family finds fun in the sun in Santa Rosa. Ready? With one son, Connor, at college in Oregon and the other, Cooper, a busy high schooler, I've seen long family vacations become as fleeting as their childhoods. 
squeeze in trips are now the norm. So I texted Connor prior to a long holiday weekend. Let's meet halfway in Santa Rosa. The boys, my husband, Clint, and I had traveled to this laid-back wine country town in central Sonoma County before, but usually as a quick detour from Santa Barbara. This time, our destination was Santa Rosa itself, a convenient hub for exploring the area. Peaceful two-lane roads leading to nearby attractions, wind past vineyards and woods, and the sparkling Russian River runs through it. All right, we'll get back to some jury charge practice. Ready? The approximate time was established by one of the police officers. The police officer later testified that he had witnessed the shooting. The officer's testimony lacked credibility. It lacked credibility because the police officer indicated that he left the scene. The reason he gave was that he was called to the scene of another crime that was occurring. The police were not certain as to what happened in the intervening hours. The intervening hours were between the time the crime was supposed to have occurred until the time that the crime was actually reported. There was nothing to indicate when the actual time the murder occurred. The intervening hours were the hours between 10 p.m. and midnight when the body was discovered. Well, that ends that jury charge. Let's go ahead and start start a new one. Ready? Here we go. In the case in which the testimony of one 
of the police officers was called into question. It was the transcript of the court reporter that was used to show that the police officer had lied under oath. The transcript was the report that the court reporter provided. The transcript was the official record that contained the testimony of the witness. It was the responsibility of the court reporter to provide this testimony of the witness. The testimony was taken under oath. After the transcript of the court reporter was reviewed, it was determined that the police officer gave conflicting statements within the transcript. The attorney for the defendant noted that the testimony in several places conflicted. The testimony that did not match was the testimony that had been taken outside of court. It appeared that the police officer had provided some conflicting statements regarding where he had seen the defendant. In his transcript prior to his testimony in court, his testimony conflicted in several places. His testimony did not match in several different areas. All right, let's try this, this literary material. And it's called Flow, F-L-O-W, Flow Going. And it's regarding the Russian River. And so here we go. For me, the best lazy summer day is a float on the gentle lower Russian River. I've paddled it twice by canoe, but for this outing we took a guided kayak tour. For eight miles or so, we let the current pull us past cottonwood, alder, and willow trees. Our guide, Randy, pointed out snowy egrets and mallards that appeared as unruffled as I felt. While Clint and I in our kayak were content to drift, our offspring in theirs chased 
everything in sight. And when we felt hungry, we simply pulled over to a sandbar for a picnic lunch and then enjoyed a cool dip and a nap before pushing off again. So let's see here, we have sandbar, and sandbar is one word, sandbar, S-A-N-D-B-A-R, kayak, kayak, we had snowy egrets, snowy egrets, E-G-R-E-T-S, Mallards, M A L L A R D S. We had cottonwood, alder, and willow trees. Got some more words for our vocabulary development. Alrighty, so let's let's get back to a little bit of jury charge practice. We'll finish up this jury charge. Ready? To make matters worse. In the court testimony, he gave more statements that did not match. In fact, he stated another different set of facts. His testimony did not agree with the testimony that he had previously given. In the cross-examination of the police officer, the defense attorney was able to find several times when the testimony of the police officer did not match the transcript of his testimony that he had before him. He referred to that transcript a number of times during the court testimony. It was for this reason that the credibility of the police officer was called into question. He caught the police officer in a number of different lies. The police officer said that the testimony in the verbatim transcript was not correct. He said that he had not been given an opportunity to review it. Let's try this 
this short literary. It's actually regarding the Charles M. Schultz Museum. So the Peanuts characters. All right, here we go. The floor to ceiling wall mural gave me a sense of how good cartoonist Charles Schultz was. During his career, he inked 17,987 peanut, Peanuts comic strips. 3,588 of them were pieced together to create the image. As we took in the displays of Snoopy's doghouse and the kite-eating tree, I felt nostalgic for my childhood when I would spend Sundays on the living room floor with my papers, comics, section. Schultz, a Santa Rosa resident for 30 years, loved hockey so much that he built a community ice rink next to the museum. We poked our heads into the rink's lobby where he sometimes ate his breakfast. Right, that will conclude our jury charge and literary, literary practice. Thank you.